Welcome back, everyone. We have got our very first matchup of the night. It is going to be myself and Nibs. We have not commentated a whole lot, have we, Nibs? No, it's been a while. <laughs> I'm super excited to, uh, you know, we're switching up the commentating pairs. So Yeah, pretty cool. <laughs> uh, we're going to have this. I'm really excited for this matchup. Uh, as we can see these teams right off the bat here, Rollercoaster using a rain team, which is something that he used quite extensively during um the uh previous format before series seven so not not even series six he really used it in like series five and six um uh, using it for a lot of those texas vgc tours um so we see some familiar faces with gothitelle polytoad kingdra ferrothorn um now we have the dark urshifu as well as the tapu coco what are you seeing from turtles team right now uh, Turtle's team is looking pretty cool. It's that Galarian Moltres, uh, Regirock, who uh, seems to be a fan favorite here at the ATX VGC uh, community. Uh, everyone seems to love it. There's also the Incineroar, and it looks like the um, water type uh, Urshifu. I like to call them wa Water Fu and Dark Fu. Um, Rylaboom, as uh, Santacos likes to call it, uh, <laughs> and the Tapu Coco as well. Yeah. <laughs> we were giving him a hard time in his stream last night for, for calling it Rylaboom. <laughs> Yeah, so some really cool stuff here. Uh, I, I will say I've used Regirock quite a bit lately, um, and it's a lot of fun. It, like, put that thing behind screens and just, you know, try and do your best to go ahead and, uh, you know, try and uh, try and do, do your best to try and do damage to it. You're not going to do a whole lot. Yeah, it's already super bulky, and then you give that thing a Dynamax option, and it just obviously doubles in bulk, but just becomes that much more of a threat and then obviously you can uh it gets access to steel spike and and uh max quake and it, it gets all sorts of different boosts that just makes it even more bulky it's a very very cool pokemon indeed um so i think it's gonna be a really interesting matchup here with the water or shifu on turtle's side next to the, versus the rain team of rollercoasta i definitely think that rollercoaster's got a pretty nice matchup here with rain i will say having used regirock quite a bit one matchup that doesn't do so well against it uh, is Rain. <laughs> I've struggled with those Rain teams. Yeah. Rollercoaster Costa seems to be a really good pilot of this um, Parish parish Rain kind of team, especially with the Ferrothorn and the, the Trap in there with the Gothitelle. He, he has been loving using that um, at, in 2020 in general. For sure. Yeah, so we are going to see the leads here. Uh, Turtle Mania is going to have the Tapu Coco um, and the water type urshifu as rollercoaster is just going to go straight ahead and lead with that rain it's going to be the kingdra and the polytoad right off the bat yep uh so really interesting setup here you've got the rain mode if you're rollercoaster you are immediately faster and from turtle's point of view there's not really a way to change the weather here um you know not really looking at any pokemon on the field they're going to have access to anything that will change the weather you obviously have to be a little bit worried about tapu coco um gonna still do a lot of damage uh, coming off of a Dazzling Gleam. We know that um, one of the biggest problems um, with uh, uh, with this Kingdra is its special defense. So the positioning, obviously a little bit precarious, but you can do a ton of damage right off the bat here if you're Rollercoaster. It looks like he's just going to go ahead and opt for this turn one max. Um, going to go ahead and try and take out the threats as quickly as possible and get as much as possible out of this turn. Yeah, and it is going to be that Kingdra with the Dynamax option. Um, obviously a better one there as it does have access to that Swift Swim. As you mentioned, it is going to straight away be faster. Uh, maybe go for something like an Airstream here or even a, a dr uh, Max um, Dragon just to try and drop that Protect. Oh. <laughs> yeah, not going to be doing... It looks like we may have lost Nibs there. I think he was talking about Max Worm ending into uh, the... Urshifu, probably not into that fairy type Tapu Koko. We do see the Max uh, <laughs> Max Geyser into the Tapu Koko, uh, while the Rillaboom goes ahead and gets a critical hit on, I believe that was uh, on close combat, so not even on the move where it's guaranteed to crit. It does manage to get a crit. Uh, the Scald coming out from Politoed here will break any potential Sash on an Urshifu, as well as get the Burn, which is really big. Now... Um, that close combat, which previously did about almost 50% to the Kingdra, not going to be doing 50% anymore. So, um, seeing here, we got uh, our very first prediction going on. <sighs> uh, and we have Nibs back, it sounds like. How's it going, Nibs? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? Oh, no. We, we are. <laughs> Nibs' internet is freezing left and right, it sounds like. Am I here? <laughs> You're here, technically. All right. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> what did I miss, Gemma? <laughs> uh, so on the first turn, we saw a Max uh, Geyser into a Protecting Tapu Koko, as well as a Scald into the Urshifu, which did get the burn. So um, that, that close combat that did roughly 50% to Dynamax um, uh, Kingdra isn't going to have an option this time around. So uh, here oh, we wow. see the Pivot coming in with that Rillaboom switching in for the Tapu Koko, overriding your own terrain. Um, and a protect or detect. I'm sorry, coming out from the, um, <laughs> coming out from that Urshifu. Yeah, and that Kingdra here is just gonna opt for the Max Geyser uh, to reset the rain potentially. Uh, targeting down what was the Tapu Koko is now the Rillaboom. That still does 50% damage even though uh, it is resisted. Yeah. So uh, in this positioning right here, uh, you know, you switch in your your Rillaboom to go ahead and take a Max Geyser better um obviously doing 50 percent uh and and you can threaten you know potentially a choice banded um grassy glide into that rillaboom this time around but it is something where uh this rillaboom is kind of in a precarious position because a max airstream just kind of immediately removes it or even a hurricane after a max airstream here uh the real question is is does rollercoaster live two choice banded grassy glides um, one in max and one out of max because it looks like he's gonna be able to take out this urshifu or really whatever switches into the urshifu slot yeah he could be um just predicting for that rillaboom to just go straight ahead and, and target down that uh polytoad as well uh in this turn here yeah so polytoad is going to switch out and um it's going to be replaced by tapu coco the tree master that looked like that's a pretty cool mark <laughs> Yeah, uh, really smart switch from Rollercoaster here, overriding the Grassy Train, bringing back out the Electric Train, so it's going to be able to shut down any Grassy Glides with priority, um, and it's also going to cut that damage of the Grassy Glide pretty significantly, <laughs> but unexpectedly here, I think we might be seeing a Max, uh, G-Max Rillaboom right here. I think we might as well, uh, that, and that's a really good play there by Turtle, um, because he is, actually, that doesn't, no, this is G-Max Rillaboom, so the terrain is not, not going to be reset after this, um, Probably a max. Um, I'm sorry. Remind me what it's called. <laughs> G max uh, drum beating, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we just see the airstream here into that Urshifu is enough to pick up that KO. Uh, putting Rollercoaster, he he used all three turns of his max and he was able to chunk down several things, but really only taking one KO at the end of the day. Um, I guess we'll have to see. Is that going to be enough? Yeah. So the drum solo does come out from that Rillaboom and it's targeting down that Kingdra. Uh, so that is gonna be enough to pick up that knockout into that Kingdra slot there. Yeah, really nice play there. Uh, putting yourself in a position where if it is perhaps choice banded, um, you are like, and you were going for something like Grassy Glide, it's pretty precarious having this Tapu Koko that can switch in and overwrite the terrain, mm -hmm. or you might be forced to overwrite your own terrain later on in the game. Uh, by G-maxing it there, you kind of guarantee you're probably gonna live a max airstream while G-max. Um, mm -hmm. Probably not a helping hand max airstream, but definitely um, gonna live a max airstream from this life orb Kingdra um, And then you're in a much better position here in terms of bulk um, Also, just that G max drum solo getting a hundred and sixty base power attack huge boost um, and is enough to just go ahead and take out the Kingdra Yeah, absolutely. So we do actually see uh, turtle mania has the incineroar that just enters the field and uh, while we see the awesome animation of the Rillaboom uh, doing some drum solos over there, we also see the Ferrothorn come in for Rollercoaster. <laughs> thanks so much for the gift sub, Maggie. And hey, Joe UX9, thanks so much for the raid. Oh, Welcome wow. everyone to the ATX VGC Monday Night <laughs> Friendlies. Uh, Y'all are checking out right now. We've got Rollercoaster versus Turtle Mania. Uh, my name is Gemma or Gems. I'm here with Nibs Plays Games, and we're going to be commentating the rest of this match here. Y'all joined at a perfect time here in game number one. Uh, we see that uh, Rollercoaster's Tapu Koko does go down here um, to the Max Quake coming out from that G Max Rillaboom on the field. Uh, Colding Light, is this a tournament? No, this isn't a tournament. This is our ATX VGC Monday Night Friendlies. We do uh, a series of about five um, exhibition games every Monday night, and so it's an opportunity to get uh, good practice in a best of three format and also get a chance to do it on stream with commentators. Um, it's really, it's good practice and it's a chance to run some fun stuff as well. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, just to mention there, what, what just happened, Gemma, the uh, Incineroar faked out the uh, Tapu Koko and that 
actually made it so that Tapu Coco doesn't get to attack and that Rillaboom goes just goes straight for a max quake and knocks out that Coco. Yeah, the the uh, the fake out there stopping any kind of volt switch shenanigans that it was going for. Uh, thanks so much for the follow, Joe UX9. <laughs> thanks for the follow as well, Song27 and Me Seeks TV. Uh, I'm gonna try and catch up with these as quickly as, as y'all are putting them in and we really appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> Zaya's mid, thank you for the follow. Um, so here, that is game number one. We see Rollercoast to go ahead and throw in the towel a little early there, try and preserve some information, realizing that it really wasn't the best uh, set of situations for him. So uh, yeah, Turtle really turned that one around. I think the, the big move there was maxing the Rillaboom and calling that switch in of that Tapu Koko, overriding the terrain and, and recognizing I can't just go for grassy glides here. Um, I think also the amount of damage that was done to that Urshifu so early on really kind of forced um, the Rillaboom later on. Yeah, I don't know if it's confirmed that the Rillaboom is um, Choice Bandit or not. I don't I don't know if we can officially confirm that, but the fact that it did go for that Dynamax there kind of makes you think that it probably is. That way it can opt for different moves such as the Max Quake that we saw. Yeah, I wouldn't be too surprised by that. I think that uh, that water Urshifu or the Warshifu is, I, I know you like to call them. What was it you water, said? Water, water Fu, Fu and Dark yeah. Fu. Yeah. I, I like Warshifu and, and I, don't, I, don't, I haven't come up with a Dark Urshifu one yet because that one just sounds too derpy, but... Um, dork Fu. Yeah, Dork Fu. That's a good one. Um, so yeah, in that positioning, uh, it looks like the Rollercoaster has really zeroed in immediately on game number two. Um, knowing exactly the forward that he wants to bring. A lot of pressure here. Rollercoaster at this point has only lost, I think, uh, two friendlies up until this point. Maybe just one? I think it was... I think it's just one, Gemma. Yeah. I think he's, he's either 13 and th 13 and 1 or 13 and 2. Yeah, I am... Uh, you can find that information on our website, actually. It's true, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If you uh, use the exclamation point website in the chat there, uh, you can find a whole lot of information about ATX VGC, such as the standings from Monday Night Friendlies. Uh, Snowman 1.10, 1.0, thank you for the follow. Yeah, for sure. So uh, we see a really similar setup from both trainers this time around with the Urshifu, the Urshifu plus the Electric Seed Tapu Koko from the last round. Um, and this time around, we see the Politoed and the Kingdra yet again, with Rollercoaster going immediately for rain here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, kind of odd to see um, Rollercoaster just standing by what he led with last time around, as he uh, wasn't able to pick up the win, but he's still feeling pretty confident in his ability to keep up. I wonder if he's got something different in the back this time around. Yeah, I, I think this time around, uh, he's clearly not going to disrespect that uh, <laughs> the... Uh... <laughs> Uh, R Rillaboom quite as much as he did last time around. I think he knows that he's going to have to try and get a max airstream off into it at some point. The real challenge here is that Tapu Koko is still threatening uh, some kind of damage from like a Dazzling Gleam. The fact that it's Electric Seed makes me think it might be uh, at least slightly bulkier um, or at least trying to supplement its bulk there with that Electric Seed. Not going to help a ton against this, uh, this core right here, but uh, it is a nice way to get some extra bulk on there. Yeah, I wonder if it's more of a support Coco since it has uh, that electric seed. It could have something like screens or even electro web. Uh, but in the meantime, we are going to see a Dynamax here from the Kingdra turn one. Uh, and we are actually going to see a Dynamax here from Turtle Mania as well. I wonder if this is going to be that Tapu Coco. Uh, and it is. Yeah, we do see right off the <laughs> bat Max Tapu Coco against here this uh, Politoed and Kingdra, it's, that's a pretty good Pokemon to have maxed, I'd say. Uh, in this position, Kingdra's just gonna go for this Max Geyser here in the rain, gonna be trying to do as much damage as possible to that Tapu Koko, does a ton right there. <laughs> Six foot two black boy, thanks for the follow. <laughs> uh, but in return, how much is this Kingdra gonna take from a Max Starfall? Honestly, not that much. I'm kind of surprised by the amount of damage there. Uh, yeah, I'm... I'm honestly surprised that that geyser did almost two-thirds damage to that uh, Tapu Koko. We are going to see surging strikes come out from uh, the Urshi, the water food, the Warshifu, uh, <laughs> into the Kingdra. And that's not doing a whole lot of damage either. Um, so this thing is going to be left with 124 HP, which is not too bad. It still has at least one more turn left, it looks like, as the Scald comes out from the Politoed, targeting down that Urshifu in the rain. It's going to be a little boosted, but uh, leaves it with about 67% health left. Yeah, for sure. Uh, the one key difference on this turn versus the last game was that uh, Urshifu, the, or as Bad is calling it, Wet Urshifu, um, went for <laughs> a um, 
Close Combat, which dropped its spideff by one stage. That Scald hit a lot harder last time around. This time, yeah. uh, Roller Coaster opts to just go ahead and remove it from the field. Um, after breaking the Sash last turn with Scald, a max airstream here, uh, is going to go ahead and take out that Urshifu, and now is going to leave um, this Tapu Koko in a position where it's free to go for another attack here. Does another max Starfall get this, or is it going to have to be a max... Ooh, it's a max Lightning into the Politoed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that... um kind of interesting play there does not opt for the knockout into the uh kingdra i wonder if turtle mania kind of let the uh, uh water type urshifu out there um to get moved out so he could get a free switch in for um a choice and grassy glide with the rillaboom yeah it is something where uh given the way that roller coaster played that last time around you're not going to feel super safe until you see that tapu coco on the field to bring in your own urshifu in terms of terrain control um, plus, this Tapu Koko is going to likely only have two moves that it can use while maxed, and they're both going to overwrite the um, overwrite the uh, terrain here once those moves are used. So, uh, interesting. I'm, I'm curious kind of how this might go, go down in terms of I expect we're about to see something like a... Um, a uh, uh, a choice grassy banded gra grassy lead. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, and roller coaster is then pretty free to switch in that Tapu Coco and and be in a really really good position. Um, it is going to boost the attack of the opposing Tapu Coco if it goes for an electric attack into roller coaster. But I will say, kind of trading almost all of the damage on this um, Tapu Coco for um, <laughs> plus both the Urshifu and this Rillaboom might be worth the trade. I think it's absolutely worth the trade. So the one thing to note, Rollercoaster has to do this play, otherwise he does just straight up lose his Kingdra unless he wants to protect it. But kind of interesting moment here, uh, Turtle Mania is actually just gonna opt for the switch out, uh, probably predicting this play. Switches out the Rillaboom, brings it in the uh, Incineroar, uh, who is most likely going to take this um, Airstream coming from the Kingdra and the Tapu Koko on Turtle Mania side of the field, opts for the Protect. This Airstream does target down that Incineroar and that does about 50% health yeah. to that Incineroar. And and honestly, with the Max Guard coming out from that Tapu Koko, it's not going to be in a position to take out this Kingdra this turn. Uh, kind of a risky play there from Turtle, both switching out the Rillaboom to protect it and Max Guarding kind of covers for both and it does the least amount of damage but you're also not taking a ko in return and now this kingdra is in a position where it can just go for something uh you know obviously you're, you're gonna want to protect on this turn with the fake out coming from the opposing incineroar but after that fake out it's pretty free to just go for muddy waters it's going to be faster than both of these pokemon with um airstream boosts at plus weather control so yeah you're in a really good position yeah, absolutely. And I'm curious to see if Turtle Mania just reads into that protect, but also I feel like if you're in Turtle Mania's position, you have to go for the fake out into that Kingdra and try to pick it off. Yeah, so, and we do see here, uh, we've got a redemption of the Pika Caster Steam coming out from Scarlet Skill. Um, and we've got the Tapu Koko here going for a Volt Switch into that Incineroar, getting some really nice chunk damage down there. Yeah, so Tapu Koko going back to Roller Costa. Uh, he's going to be forced to throw out that uh, Therathorn. And the Dazzling Gleam does come out from the Tapu Koko. Obviously, that Kingdra is protected. So this is going to do nothing but chip damage to this Therathorn. It leaves it with 11 HP damage. That's almost nothing. So this Kingdra here is free to just go for Muddy Water. Yeah, so here you got to play the game of Missing Muddy Waters, one of the most <laughs> frustrating buttons to go ahead and click in the game. Looks like Rollercoaster has managed to get a double connect here, and we'll just go for the body press follow on with that <laughs> uh, Ferrothorn. Not going to really be going in anything, but might give away a little bit of information that this is actually going to be the Assault Vest variant as opposed to something like um, Leech Seed Recover, I mean, Leech Seed um, Leftovers iron defense body press um yeah so that's that switch there uh gemma was huge for roller coaster because he's now still going to be able to play the terrain games if he wants to when this rillaboom comes back in and it's not going to be able to switch out uh so once this grassy terrain gets switched back to electric terrain it's not going to it's not going to be good for this rillaboom <laughs> <laughs> thanks so much for the follow dudley uh yeah for sure you, you're going to be able to basically maintain this control i think the one thing you got to be a little bit afraid of is a uh, fake out coming out from this um, I mean, Fake Out will potentially do enough damage, mm -hmm. but it actually looks like Turtle Mania is going to try and preserve as much information as possible here with the forfeit. And we're going into game number 
three. I need to update these overlays. Sorry about that, folks. But yeah, uh, roller coaster there, taking it from uh, getting kind of destroyed by the G Max roller boom to mm -hmm. uh, kind of just treating it as the all my friends are dead, and uh, it doesn't really have an opportunity to uh, to do what it wants to do. I, I think that the Max game one just really was kind of surprising. I feel like most of the time when you see a roller boom nowadays, it's not maxing. Um, mm -hmm. So seeing it max in that instance was kind of a shocking thing. Um, and it was a really good play, uh, kind of taking advantage of the fact that everyone typically assumes that you're just going for uh, grassy glides continually when you've got your Rilla Boom. Um, but recognizing that Roller Coaster could just switch in the Tapu Coco, overwrite that grassy terrain, really good positioning. Um, and then here, the adjustment in game number two. Um, the one thing I'm a little curious about is the max coming out from that, uh, from that Tapu Coco. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, the only thing Turtle Mania really switched around there, um, as you're saying, is is the Tapu Koko maxing instead of that Rillaboom. Um, do you think that, that that helped Turtle Mania, or do you think that Turtle Mania is better off just maxing that Rillaboom? Um, if, obviously, they, Turtle Mania won game one by maxing that, that Rillaboom. Yeah, for sure. I think the Rillaboom is definitely a really strong uh, really strong piece. And I think it, it all comes down to when you can take off roller coasters. Uh, Tapu Coco. If you're able to take that out early game, uh, then mm -hmm. you could potentially get the get the terrain control in your favor for the remainder of the time. So here we go. We are going into game number three, a set number one of the night, and we are seeing a total change up from Turtle Mania, leading the Tapu Coco plus the Galarian Moltres, threatening some really funny shenanigans here. Do you think we might see something like a self volt switch to proc I, a weakness policy? I would really like to say no. <laughs> That would do so much damage. Uh, I mean, maybe actually, you know what? After saying that would do so much damage, that could potentially proc the Berserk from the Moltres, which could make it super threatening. I don't, I don't, I don't recommend doing that. <laughs> yeah, I think the biggest problem is that this Kingdra still outspeeds, and you're going to be in a position where um, you're going to be taking a lot of damage from that Kingdra. Um, yeah, right. And and we already know that uh, the Kingdra is faster than this Tapu Koko, so it's not something like a Choice Scarf Tapu Koko going for this. You've seen Protect from it. We've seen that it's slower overall than the Kingdra in, in Rain. So it's a super interesting set here. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm kind of curious what we end up seeing. Right off the bat, uh, game number three from Roller Coaster here, we see a Max on turn one. Not surprising. <laughs> Three games, three Dynamax, turn one. Uh, I think it's it's funny that Joe is here um, and he just rated us because he always talks about how you want to be a little more patient most of the time uh, with your Dynamaxes and Roller Coaster, who is famed as our probably one of our best battlers, if not our best battler here at ATX Community, um, as he has the best record record in the standings and he's done it three three games in a row. And from Turtle Mania here, we're actually going to see a Dynamax turn one as well, and it's going to be that Moltres. Yeah, Moltres here, uh, gonna go ahead and try and... I, I think it's an interesting move here from Turtle Mania, trying to get something like a potential speed control, um, maybe try and stall this out or get enough Airstream boosts, but uh, we do see the reveal of Helping Hand. This is the first time I think we've seen this from this Politoed, as the Tapu Koko opts for Protect, similar to the Game 1 setup, um, as this Kingdra now is gonna be going for a Rain-boosted Helping Hand Max Geyser, into the Galarian Moltres, it, it's going to take it down about 60%. It will proc Berserk. Yeah, Berserk is always scary. We do see the Kingdra lose some uh, life orb recoil, as we've seen before, and this Airstream Berserk boosted is going to go into the Kingdra. Uh, I'm not sure how the speed techs work, but I don't think this Moltres is going to be able to outspeed still, even with the plus one, since the rain is active. Yeah, it, it might be close, depending on how this Kingdra is trained. Uh, but the mm -hmm. double speed uh, is incredibly nice if you are the Kingdra. Um, but if I had to guess based on damage, this is more than likely going to be something like um, a, a modest as opposed to a timid on the Kingdra. So mm -hmm. probably not going to be full max speed investment here. Um, so I'm curious if Rollercoaster has specifically you need this to be faster than a Moltres at plus one. Yes, yeah, so we do see Tapu Koko, the Tree Master, come back out once again for Roller Coaster uh, in place of the Politoed. And that uh, Glaring Moltres does opt for the Max Guard this time around. And oh my goodness, that Dazzling Gleam from Turtle Mania's uh, Tapu Koko brings 
uh, roller coasters uh, Kingdra down to three HP, and we're gonna see a max airstream uh, come from the Kingdra into the Tapu Koko, and um, it's not gonna be enough to get a KO, but it is gonna do a lot of damage. And the Life Orb does pick up the KO for Turtle Mania into the uh, Kingdra on roller coasters side. Yeah, that uh, that Tapu Koko clearly very fast here, uh, getting the attack off before the Kingdra in rain. So plus one Tapu Koko being uh, being fast. <laughs> uh, that's got to be kind of max speed on that as well as probably the modest on that uh, that Kingdra based on that speed interaction. We do see that uh, with that Kingdra going down to its own uh, life orb, it importantly did get one speed boost onto this Tapu Koko though and Moltres can't protect itself. It did last turn. So uh, this Tapu Koko is kind of in a position where it can take a KO onto Moltres, and then you just have to take damage from the opposing Tapu Koko. Yeah, it's at plus one uh, speed here that uh, roller coasters Tapu Koko. Um, I think Turtle Mania's is actually at plus one as well. Yeah, they are both at plus one. The opposing Tapu Koko does either, it's faster or want a speed tie there, goes ahead and gets Electro Webs, off, which is going to drop uh, roller coasters Tapu Koko by one stage here. I'm going to bring the speed down and the max airstream will come off. Um, going ahead and adding insult to injury as the polytoad will go down. Mm -hmm. Impossible it, toad. Thank you for the follow. Yeah, thanks so much. We appreciate <laughs> it. Welcome to the ATX VGC Monday Night Friendlies. We are bringing y'all game number three of set number one. We've got roller coaster against Turtle Mania. Hey, Peter VGC, thanks so much for the follow. Uh, we do see that Volt Switch is enough to go ahead and pick up the KO onto the opposing Galarian Moltres as Rollercoaster will go ahead and retreat back and reset with his final Pokemon on the field and be able to bring that Tapu Koko back on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so I do think Grassy Terrain will be will be set more than likely if that Rillaboom is um, the last Pokemon for Turtle Mania. Are they down to the, their last two? I'm sorry, I need to uh, Turtle check. Mania should have two more at this point yeah. because uh really the first pokemon to go was that was that galarian moltres hey thanks so much for the follow ld jorzy welcome to the atx vgc monday night friendlies uh we're bringing you game number three of set number one here roller coaster in kind of a precarious position um he's got to be really careful uh given the fact that the opposing tapu koko has a speed boost um and mm -hmm. it's going to go ahead and get this dazzling gleam off before he can do anything but yeah, I don't think Rollercoaster is necessarily out of it, uh, as we are going to see his um, Tapu Koko go for that Dazzling Gleam, brings that Urshifu down into the yellow, uh, and the close combat is going to come Ooh. from the Urshifu and bring that Ferrothorn down to 7 HP. Um, hey, Lucas thank Nivey, for the... thanks for the follow. Yeah. Kyra Ball does come from the Ferrothorn targeting down uh, the opposing Tapu Koko, and it is going to be enough to take it out. Yeah, the only problem here is this Ferrothorn is just barely living on a little bit. Um, so you're going to be in kind of a dangerous position. It, it can go down to Aqua Jet at this point, right? Yeah, probably. I, I don't think that Turtle Mania knows that it's a Salt Vest, but uh, we do know that. So it can't protect itself. But um, maybe maybe Turtle Mania kind of predicting something like of a protect from this Ferrothorn might not even target it down potentially. Yeah, the other thing you gotta be aware of is the fact that this Rillaboom isn't choice ban and is carrying fake out. We haven't seen that yet, but if it is and it is able to just go ahead and go for priority fake out here um, mm -hmm. onto the uh, Ferrothorn, that's gonna be enough for a KO. Yeah, also uh, Rollercoaster needs to worry about a surging strikes potentially from this Urshifu targeting down that protected Tapu Koko. Yeah, uh, I mean, and it is just going to be a close combat into the Ferrothorn will be enough to take it out. Yeah, interesting positioning here, though, because now this um, this Urshifu is down to really like an incredibly low amount of damage and also minus two on its special defenses. Uh, the rain has now stopped, but you do have to worry about um, the Grassy Glide coming out from this Rillaboom here. And you don't quite have enough health if you're this Tapu Koko, I think, to live the combination of like Aqua Jet plus Grassy Glide or even just... Mm -hmm. Grassy Glide plus um, any other damage. Yeah, I think Rollercoaster is going to need a super mega ultra crit from this Tapu Koko into the Rillaboom in order to uh, pick up a win. I do think Aqua Jet plus Grassy Glide probably just does it. Oh. Although we do see this berry come from uh, the Tapu Koko and it's going to bring it all the way back up to half health. That was a wiki. Uh, Grassy Glide from the Rillaboom brings Ooh. it all. Oh, it just does the clean KO and yeah. that's going to be the set. Yeah, that is an incredibly well played set between Rollercoaster and Turtle Mania there. Um, 
really uh, a fun battle of terrain where we're seeing, you know, both these players trying to manage that terrain and recognize how pivotal Rillaboom was in game number one and just how pivotal, how pivot, pivotal Tapu Koko was in game number two for Rollercoaster. Um, so yeah. really well played by our two battlers.